and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today guys where club football is very nearly back upon us again. We cannot wait for Barca's return and coming up today we're going to have more injury updates in the team focusing there on the likes of Ansu Fati, Gavi and Araujo discussed as well. We've also got some really important discussion I feel on Juan Laporta. We need to have a real conversation right now about him and the board at the club. We're also going to be talking about La Mina Mal because he sat down last night for a really good interview and we have some great quotes to discuss. So all of that is on the way for you today. So come on and let's do this. But I do first of all have to begin guys with the absolutely incredible super thanks support that we have been seeing over the past few days. Big shout out here to Osman, to Fahim, to Connor as well. And we've also had unbelievable support coming in from Nigeria. So many super thanks there. And in terms of actual viewership here of the channel, Nigeria now stands in the top three on the channel. So that is absolutely amazing. Big, big thank you to all of you getting involved. And very soon, we're actually going to have a league table on the Super Thanks, guys. So all of this certainly will not go unnoticed. I really, really do appreciate it. But let's kick off right here, guys with some serious discussion on Juan Laporta, on the board at Barcelona, and particularly looking forward as well. We know the election is in 2026, but during this international break, Victor Font came out, of course, who is a potential candidate for the next election, and he actually said that due to what we saw in the summer, due to what we're seeing from Juan Laporta and his board, early elections should be called. He called there for the elections to take place next summer in 2025, and he was quite outspoken during this international break here over the past few days. However, guys, as much as right here on the channel, and certainly plenty of people within the Barcelona fan base have been quite critical of Laporta at times during the summer. You know, I think we were all quite unhappy. There were promises in there that weren't really kept, particularly surrounding the one-for-one -one rule. We were not able to reach it in the end. It did not happen as we were told that it would. And I think in general, a few situations that haven't really been handled all that well. The Ilkar Gundogan one didn't really sit that well with me. And especially the handling of the Xavi situation. Not the decision with Xavi, but the way that it all unfolded. And it was a real mess in the end with Xavi. Things like that have not really been done too well and I think there's still question marks about Deco in the sporting director's role but having said all of that though and I do accept here that criticism it can happen you know at times we have to address things at times we have to call things out for what they are not everything is good all of the time but at the same time not everything is bad all of the time so I want to be very very clear here and very fair when I say that yes we can criticize yes we can point things out when things aren't going right or things are going wrong but we also give credit where it is due. Because what we have seen now come out over the past 24 hours is La Liga announcing there that Barca were actually able to increase their salary limit over the summer there. We have gone from 204 million back in February to now that figure standing at 426 million. So that is a big increase there. It's still not really where we want to be, where we should be, because when you look at Real Madrid, they're at 754 million euros. So that there, it's not even that far away from double what Barca can spend on wages, which is not what we want, because that is why we're still aiming for the one-for-one -one rule. We still got the Nike deal to Come. We're still waiting for some money to come in from that failed Libero deal. We haven't got all of that in yet. And of course, remember that we're going to be returning to the Spotify camp now and we will have big, big increases in revenue when we can get back to our stadium and especially when we're back at full capacity. So right now, you can see the vision. You can see that year upon year, it has been tough at times. You know, the progress maybe hasn't always been as quick as we wanted as fans, but we are getting there. We are making strides here to return to where we should be. And that is what I want to say about Laporta. As much as there are things that, you know, I don't agree with everything he does. I don't agree with everything that he says. But the one thing that I can really and truly say and believe is that he cares about this club. There is not a moment that goes by where I don't feel he actually has our best interests at heart. And like I say, he doesn't get everything right. You know, nobody does. But I do believe his heart's in the right place. I do believe that he has fought every single day since he arrived as a Barca president. He's had to make some tough calls. He's had to make some very big decisions. It hasn't always gone perfectly in terms of the handling of them. But I do believe he cares. And I do believe that slowly but surely here, Barca 
are getting back where they belong financially. We are turning things around because let's not forget we were on the brink under Bartomeu. This club financially was in absolute ruin. So to come in here to address a lot of those problems, they're not all solved. There's still work to do. There's still work going on every single day. But I just think right now, somebody there like Victor Font calling for early elections, sort of putting pressure on things very early in the season here. Number one thing that I would say is... We've got a talented squad of players. We've got a fantastic coach in Hansi Flick. What I want to do now, what all we want to do as fans, focus on the football. We can have a great season. We can have a very, very special campaign here. And I just don't want any big distractions from that right now. I don't want to hear lots of noise from outside of the club. Almost against ourselves, of course. Barca at times over the years have found ways of beating themselves over the head. You know, let's focus all together here on the football, on the work that's being done. We spoke a lot in the summer. We spoke a lot about the transfer window. But now the football started. Now we are into the season. And this is where the serious work. And ultimately, this is where everybody is going to be judged. But indeed, guys, speaking about the football, speaking about what we're going to be seeing out there on the field, we do have an update here on Ansu Fati, because obviously we seem to be targeting this Girona game with Ansu. He returned to training at the start of the week there. We were hoping that he would be in time for the Girona game on Sunday, but it seems as though right now we're just holding him back a little bit here. At the final moment here, Hansi Flick and his technical staff believe that maybe don't force it this weekend. You know, there's no setback. There's nothing wrong with Ansu. He hasn't gotten injured again or anything like that. But we are thinking right now that maybe we're more likely to see Ansu included for the Monaco game there in the following midweek. Because I think they wanted to have plenty more training sessions with the first team, with the rest of the group. Of course, like I say, he only came back properly a few days ago to training. He hasn't had that many sessions with the squad. So I just think right now that Flick and his staff, they understand Ansu's past, of course. They fully understand what he's had to go through. And they're not not going to rush him here. The season is a very, very long one. We've got so many games to come. We're only at the very, very beginning of it all. And that is why this is the kind of philosophy that we're going to see right throughout the campaign here. We're going to see exactly the same approach with Gavi. No corners are going to be cut. No risks are going to be taken. No unnecessary risks here. Because obviously, everything has to be done in its own time. We're also going to see the same thing with Ronald Arau. It was great to see him today, by the way, returning to the Ciutat Esportiva. That is where he will be continuing his recovery recovery now because even he he's making real strides as well his recovery is going very well it's progressing well which is absolutely fantastic to see but yeah we don't want to rush players back we don't want to just force players in here for the sake of one game for the sake of one week we've got to keep that long-term vision and I think what we've seen so far from Flick he's very calm very composed calculated in the way that he's treating these injured players and I think that can certainly stand us in really good stead for this season. However, guys, one man that is very much ready and raring to go again, it is none other than Lamine Yamal, and we all cannot wait to see him back out there. We've got to look after him too, though, don't forget. We've got to make sure that we're going to be managing his minutes in the right way over these very, very intense fixtures to come. But last night, he did have some time on his hands to do an interview there on Spanish TV, and I've got to say, every interview that Yamal does, every interview that I see him in, he comes across as very confident. You're a confident young man in himself, in his ability as a player, and in what he's achieved so far in his young career. But above all else, the feeling that I get here from Yamal, he is incredibly grounded. He is very, very humble, and he's just focused there on achieving his objectives, his goals as a player, but also as well as a person. And he was actually asked in that interview, and I thought it was a great answer there, how do you stay so humble with everything you've achieved at such a young age, you know, the heights that you've already reached? How do you stay grounded in that way? And his answer, it's a real example I think to everybody all around the world. He said, I go to my mother's house because she tells me to put on my slippers, to close doors, to make my bed. He said, she sets me straight. And he gave an example there. He said, I've always wanted to buy an octopus. He said, but when I was 13, my mother said, that's impossible. You know, we're not doing that. She said, when you turn 18, maybe. And he said, now, suddenly that has become maybe when you turn 21. So I think right now, Lamine has got such fantastic people around him there. Really close family. Very, very good to see. And he's certainly somebody who has real personality, but a really good nature about him as well. I think you can see that there as well. The humility in the comparisons with Lionel Messi. Because no matter what, Yamal just can't really seem to avoid those messages. Messi comparisons because of what he's doing at his age, because of the club, of course, that he's at. You're always going to get people talking about Messi and Yamal in the same sort of 
of breath and he was asked there about the photo with Messi. He said, actually, he gave me maybe some of his powers when we took that photo together. But he said, look, I do like being compared to the best player in history, Leo Messi. But he said, I also want to be me. And he said, reaching the level of Messi, it is impossible. And I think that's actually really wise, actually a good feeling to have there from Yamal, that he enjoys these comparisons. He understands them there. But what he's not doing is getting too caught up in them. He's not going to sleep every night thinking, I've got this pressure on my shoulders there. I've got this responsibility to be the new Messi, to do everything that he did, to achieve it in the way that he did. Because every career path, it's different here. You know, different players, different moments, different times in football. It's all different different here. So what we have to do is enjoy the ability. For sure, there could be similarities. There could be things that, you know, you compare to Messi. It could happen, but... Lamine is going to be Lamine. He is going to forge his own path. He is going to have his own career, his own special moments. We all hope he already has had many, and I'm sure there are many more to come. Because for sure, the biggest answer for me and the most exciting one was when he was asked about his future there, staying at Barca, could you ever see yourself leaving the club maybe in the future? Do you know what he said? He said, I never, ever want to leave Barca. He said, I want to become a legend of this club. And I think a lot of people would say, well, obviously he's going to say that there. He's a young talent coming through La Masia. He was always going to say, well, stay at Barca. But I don't know. I've actually heard a lot of young talents, you know, when they're asked about their long-term future, sometimes they can say, well, you never know what can happen. You know, I'd like to stay. I want to stay here. But you don't know in the future what can happen. But I love the conviction here. He ultimately came out and said, look, I am going nowhere. This is where I want to be. I am never leaving Barca. And it's my goal, my driving ambition to become a legend of this club. And look, he is on that path. He's got lots to do, of course. There's lots of time in his career to come and lots of incredible moments, like I say, that we hope that we have. And we are all very much behind him. He's such an exciting player. I cannot wait to see more of him. But yes, guys, as we've discussed during the break, we must handle his minutes. As much as he is fantastic, as much as he is so, so talented, we must make sure we also look after him, guys. So please do let me know in the comments down below here, what did you make of those words from Lamin Yamal? Such a great person there. Fantastic to have him as a big part of this club. Very, very proud to have him. What did you make there as well on the injury updates that we have right now? And as well, the thoughts on Juan Laporta and his board at Barcelona and what we are trying, what we are pushing to achieve every single year. So guys, let me know those thoughts down below. I will see you tomorrow. That's when the big build-up is coming to Girona versus Barca. I will see you all then. But until next time, as always, Vizca, El Barca. Uh -huh.